Welcome to Mainland News on your local regional television station. I'm Chrissy Small and some of the stories coming up in today's bulletin. Ford lives up to its anagram. Dedicated couple put it all on for Christmas and are rewarded and much more. Dedicated couple Eric and Pauline King Turner who live in Totoki Place, Motueka have been collecting Christmas themed lights and figures to decorate their property for over a decade, bringing pleasure to many over the Christmas period and this year was no different. The couple also use this decorative time collecting for a cause close to their hearts. This year donations at their gate during the Light Up Nelson competition reached just over $1,000 worth of money that the couple raised from those donations made by visitors to their Christmas Wonderland, which have yet again gone to the vital Nelson Tasman Rescue Helicopter Service. The couple were the only ones from Motueka this year to enter the competition and many people from across the region visited their stunning property with the largest group of hundreds arriving Christmas Eve to take in the magical light show that even had a real life centre taking centre stage in their grotto at the end of their garden. So it's little surprise that the couple have discovered that they have won the People's Choice Award in the 2015 Light Nelson competition. I went and met this delightful couple in their Motueka home this week. Your, your place looked absolutely stunning. Um, what was the general comments from people who voted for you, obviously? Oh, they were very, very good. Yep. Most people were really good. And mm. getting the people's choice, I think that, that says it all. Yep. Yeah, it does. Yep. That was a good award to get because it was for the whole Nelson district. Right. Now, look, honestly, not only was it the People's Choice Award, but... You know, what must have touched a few people's hearts was the fact you, that you were fundraising this time round. Tell us a bit about how you managed to do that and, and what motivated you. Uh, this is the third, third year that we've been fundraising for the uh, Nelson Rescue Helicopter. Um, we thought of other organisations, but the helicopter comes across here <coughs> quite regularly, so it is a worthwhile cause. And we do have family on farms, and you just never know when it could be used. Okay, so how much did you raise? Uh, 1060 was it? $1,065.10. Oh, great, and, and 10, 10 cents. cents. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure they were happy recipients to get that money. Oh, I'll tell you what, we were really, really pleased about it. And we topped last year's lot too as well. Yes, we, we had three really rough uh, days or nights with rain, but we still had people coming in um, and when they still um, put donations in. That's fabulous. Now, I, I think we also got struck by a bit of wind there as well. Mm. Yes, we did. We've lost a few lights and we, um, and we put, put um, over the barbecue table, we had glass lights. And on the Sunday we come in, we had that big storm, we came home and they're all smashed all over the table, so we don't have glass anymore. No. No. Yeah. Um, so no insurance on those either? No, nothing no. at all. Yeah. So look, how many sets of lights were, were involved in, in this year's display? Well, we have about, um, about 60,000 lights all together, going right around the whole house. And there are many, many inflatables. That, that's the draw card for the children, yeah. is all the Disney inflatables. And we try and change them each year, and we try and change them every, every night. night. Yes. Right. So we do have a great selection of them. And, um, yeah, so it's for the kids. So how many years have you actually been doing this? Well, this is our 10th year uh, doing it. And... Um, and That's for the competition. For the yes. competition. Yeah. And we, we, we did have it a year before this, but um, that was only just a few lights out just to start us off. But, yeah. but it's just growing and growing and growing. So what motivated you to do it in the first place? <laughs> grandchildren. <laughs> it was all for the yeah. grandchildren. Yeah. Unfortunately, the grandchildren grow up, but there's still children in us all, and we've just carried on and carried on. Right. And I believe you've had some help from the grandchildren this year as well, possibly in other years. Yes, but all the grandchildren at Christmas Eve night are all involved because uh, we have hundreds of people coming through because we have a real Father Christmas sitting in the cave. And um, this year he started at quarter past eight and he left at midnight. And he was still going at midnight when he had to leave. 
That's amazing. Now, I believe also it's not just locals that have appreciated what you've done here. No, the majority um, of the people this time were from the Nelson district that came over. We have a lot of overseas um, visitors, people that are working on the orchards and things or in agriculture. It's amazing the amount of people that do you know, do arrive. Mm. And it's the same ones too that keep coming back year after year, bringing more family, more family yeah. as they grow up. <laughs> Right. So I suppose you're all lo- you're looking for the uh, light bargains to add to the to the collection, I suppose. <laughs> well, during the year, in the winter time, Pauline goes on the computer, and that's when everything is coming out really quite cheap, and um, that's when we buy most of our lights. Does your power bill go up significantly over that period of time that you you've got the display on? No, only about thirty dollars. That's about all. But the heat pump uses more in the winter time. What we do on the, with the lights over the Christmas period. Right. And we were very fortunate this year, uh, the power company that we're in, uh, we contacted them and they gave us a discount. This is the first time ever, this is a new power company we've gone with, and they gave us a discount for our four weeks of December. Mm. Gosh, that was a nice Christmas gift, wasn't it? It was, it was very good, and it helped us out a lot. So Eric and Pauline, you'll be doing this again later this year, I, I, I expect? We certainly will be, and it's going to be bigger still. And um, we have another lot of different ideas of doing things, so we'll be changed what it was for this year. Yes. Well, look, it's been really delightful to talk with you. I'm just so pleased that the, the prize has come to small town Motueka and People's Choice Award. Well, that... that beats in all the other awards doesn't it really it does, it does. Yeah. yes yeah. but we'd just like to, to thank everybody who donated but not only that everybody that came it, it's it's just wonderful to see and there is a lot of senior people that come it's not only for the children no yeah. it was a real aladdin's mix of of everything wasn't it yeah. it was and, and see the smiles on the kids faces and the and the, and the older people it was really fantastic to see them all. That's what makes it worthwhile. Yeah, it is. As you can see, they obviously love what they do and good on their Christmas spirit. Ford Motor Company seem to be working on a new brand of car, the Ford Lemon, as a Nelson couple have recently found out. After a fault in their Ford vehicle caused a terrifying highway incident with a logging truck, the Nelson couple have been awarded a $37,000 refund on their Ford Focus Trend car that they purchased back in 2012. It was an ex-demonstration card from MS Ford in Nelson with 1,618 kilometres on the clock. However, eight months later, the problems began when an alarm sounded in the car as it was started. A dashboard warning lights flashed that the engine malfunction service was had popped up. Sorry. <laughs> Eight months later, the problems began when an alarm sounded in the car as it was started. A dashboard warning saying engine malfunction, service now, popped up. The car was returned to MS Ford and Nelson at once, but the Motor Vehicle De- Disputes Tribunal said that the couple weren't told what repairs had actually been done by the dealership. The car was returned to the Pitmans, but the same trouble soon resurfaced. Tribunal adjudicator Jason Scott McHeron said that the car put itself into limp home mode several times with the turbocharger shutting down causing a severe loss of power. The problem reoccurred over the next two years as Mrs Pittman drove the vehicle to MS Ford in June 2015. The car again lost power and later that day as she approached State Highway 6 near Nelson the car had the same meltdown. As she joined the state highway, she found that all of a sudden a logging truck was bearing down. She found herself struggling to even get to 50 kilometres an hour. She acknowledged the truck driver would not have known the car had a problem and was incapable of speeding up as he continued to bear down on her at speed, coming in right up close behind her vehicle. Mrs Pittman said it was a nerve-wracking experience. She felt MS Ford mechanics tried their level best to fix the issue, with the vehicle having been returned for repair more than a dozen times. The Pittmans finally rejected the vehicle on July 27th, believing the only course of action was through the courts. Mrs Pittman said they had, in effect, bought a lemon. 
The couple asked for a refund for the same amount paid for the car in the first place. The tribunal ordered MS Ford to take the car back and pay the Pittmans their $37,000, even though the car's three-year warranty had lapsed. So it seems as the old Holden saying goes, Ford stands for Fix or Repair Daily. Two St Lawrence Street Nelson residents woke up to an oily attack on their vehicles during the early hours of Wednesday morning. The residents who share a driveway discovered that a large amount of waste engine oil had been tipped onto the backs of their cars as they slept causing damage to both the vehicles and their driveways. Nelson Police said that at around 8am they impounded a stolen car that was discovered on St Lawrence Street but are unsure if the incidents are related. If you have any information in regards to either of these two incidents, then please contact Nelson Police or Mainland TV. Also remember that you can call Crime Stoppers and report any information anonymously. The cancellation of a couple of cruise ships this summer is disappointing for Nelson Tasman Tourism. However, as CEO Linda Keane points out, Nelson still has a lot to be happy about. Linda, it's pretty disappointing that the cruise liners um, aren't coming, a couple of cruise liners aren't coming this year. I know how much work you guys put into it. Yes. I hear that it's not all doom and gloom on that front. Can you, can you give us a comment, please? Yeah, certainly. Um, firstly, Happy New Year, Graham. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a bit disappointing to have three ships um, cancel their visits. The, the name of the ship was um, the Silver Discoverer. Now, this is a small ship that has about 100 passengers and about 80 crew. It's a, one, of the, one of these special expedition ships. So an expedition cruise ship is different from a mainstream um, recreational cruise ship. And the whole focus of this particular ship was to go down to the Auckland Islands mm -hmm. and do, um, not activities, but you know, to, to view Antarctica and what that area has to offer. The weather was really bad down um, that way. So the ship had to cruise around Fiordland and Stewart Island for a week to try to get the gap in the weather to get out to the Auckland Islands. So unfortunately they had to reschedule and we got missed off the itinerary. But you're right, it's not all doom and gloom. Um, we've got the Caledonia Sky coming in um, on Saturday. Mm. And also um, on the 3rd of February, the Silver Discoverer hopefully will come back to us. And the next two summers were looking good. We've got larger ships coming back that um, have 500 passengers. And in the summer of February 2018, we have our first big ship. So that's a 960 passenger wow. ship. Uh, that's called the Crystal Symphony and this is a really good test for us to now explore how do we get into that bigger ship market. So it's not all doom and gloom, a little, a little disappointing. Um, yeah, there is a lot of work that goes in behind <laughs> the scenes. Um, but you know, we'll hold the faith, we are a new destination in the greater scheme of things and look forward to welcoming bigger ships in the future. And is there any plans to try to hold them here for an extra extra night? Yes, when, last summer we had um, the La Astral, which is a North American and French cruise ship. And they came back three times and they come into Nelson and then they also go out to Abel Tasman and sometimes into Tarakoe. So sometimes we actually don't see the ships in Nelson because they've gone straight out into at, at Port Tarakoe and done Golden Bay activities. Um, we know already that um, the retail sector may not feel the, the, the visitors um, and passengers when they arrive, but certainly the operators are. So, you know, we're getting a really good pickup from the smaller ships where you have over 50% will do pre-booked excursions versus the really big vessels that have about 2,000 packs, only about 30% will do pre-booked excursions. Um, a lot of them still stay on board because all their food and everything is factored in. Uh, they do go off, obviously, into the CBD area, but um, yeah, we've got really good value quality uh, passengers and so we'll keep growing that part of the market. That's fantastic. Hey, and um, I know it's still in our peak time, but how do you feel about the tourist numbers at, at the moment? I mean, it seems phenomenal. I couldn't get a car park out here. I'm hoping not to get a ticket, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Uh, yes, I was actually out and about last week with the team just to sort of check out the new Mapua complex, um, the new Wilson's base in Mochuaca, um, the new Kaiteri complex and also uh, the revamped um, Hokto Marahau uh, cafe uh, and restaurant. 
Uh, definitely the feedback from the operators is that's very buoyant. Uh, the season started earlier, so we would normally say the season starts on the 1st of October, finishes the 3rd of April, but it doesn't really kick into gear till January. But the main operators that we work with are definitely saying, and it includes accommodation providers, the season definitely started on the 1st of October. They're seeing visitors from all sorts of countries, not just our traditional markets. We're beginning to see um, independent Chinese and Indian travellers now, along with our UK, US, Australian, European visitors. Um, so there's a really good upbeat feel out there. From a statistics point of view, we're tracking really well. We've exceeded our highest ever number of guests uh, night, so we're over 1.3 million now. So ever since um, statistics were recorded, we've never peaked over 1.27 million, so that's great. What's even better news for our region is that we are now exceeding the national average. So for example, year end to November 2015, uh, we had 7.7% growth, um, nationally it was 4.8%. When you break it down into the international markets, we're right on with the, the trend with New Zealand, we're 6.7, they're 6.6, .6. I'll take that. <laughs> and domestically, which is fantastic, we um, are 8.2 per cent up and at a national level they're 3.7 per cent up. So that is uh, attributed to I think some of the the marketing that we've been doing, the profile with the new airlines with Origin Air, Kiwi Regional Airlines and Jetstar coming on board, you know it has uh, really raised the profile that Nelson has had. Cricket World Cup was brilliant last year, the Royal Visit, you know global exposure that you couldn't ask for that really high highlighted the whole scientific R&D community um, and activity here and also our great food, wine and beer offering. So we're, we're in a good place. Um, I'm also picking up that we're going to be shifting through into April and May, so it's going to be a good long season and uh, hopefully the sun keeps shining for us. Opera in the Park has been a favourite concert for many in the region to enjoy a stunning musical interlude from the hazy, crazy days of summer. The concert is still proving as popular, with tickets selling out fast. Team leader for festivals, Alex de Merpieu, told Graham O'Brien what people can expect. Excellent, it's all quiet down here today at Trafalgar Park, but on the 13th of February it's going to be a different story. Can you tell us a bit more about the opera in the park? You're definitely right, Graham. Quiet today, but sunny, and much more busier on the 13th of February, Saturday. Uh, hopefully the same weather. Yes, Opera in the Park, as you know, it's now an um, every other year event. Uh, it's been going on for quite some time, it's very popular. We expect between six and 7,000 people to come. Wow. It's one of those very popular, family-friendly events. You know, it is uh, an opportunity for them to enjoy great music. Um, it, called opera for in the park for a reason there's a lot of classical music but not only contemporary music as well and um, this year the program will display um, quite a, a, a vast array of romantic composers Puccini, Rossini, um, Berlioz uh, and, and of course there'll be Mozart um, from, from the 18th century but also Maori modern quartet and Jackie Clark, Dave Dubbin, so a right mix for everyone to enjoy an absolutely delightful evening. There's a, also a thing that works really well, it's a bring your own picnic type of setting and people really enjoy that. They come here, they're set up at, well the gates open at 5.30 so they can uh, start to set up um, their picnic place, they can enjoy with the family, the children. It's very, it's good mixture between entertainment and uh, high quality performances so it I guess that explains the the reason why it is so popular it is also I mean you have to think about uh, 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 such a such a beautiful set list of uh, performers for a price that's ridiculous ridiculously low uh, $15 for adults early bird price till the end of uh, January so just want to put this out to you uh, it is ridiculously low for that um, quality of performance and for that quality of event. So yes, I hope to see you there, Graham, yeah. actually. Um, and is it hard to get some of these big named acts to come along? Well, it's a good question because, you know, uh, th that is something that has to be scheduled uh, in advance. Uh, 
the, the higher you aim, the more uh, booked out are those performers. So you need to take uh, a lot of time uh, in advance to, to look at the performance of their availability, um, be able to uh, you know, plan and, and organize the trip and all that. So it takes some time, definitely. And you want also the right mix. Uh, you cannot put, it's, it's a bit like a menu, you know, you put the right ingredients together and that just offers the best experience to our uh, community. So it takes time to plan everything together, to, to make sure that everyone's available and then uh, you know, put it out there for our community. But hey, the latest poll says everyone wants to come to visit um, Nelson, so it can't be too hard, right? Well, that's the place to go. I can tell you as a French guy, that is definitely a destination among the top ones in, uh, in, in the Southern Hemisphere. And Opera in a Park, believe it or not, we got ticket sales uh, that were triggered from uh, Northern America. Um, from Australia and it's not unusual. Opera in a Park is just part of those international gigs that people are looking for when they want to leave the country and look for a place where to go to enjoy some beautiful setting but also quite high level cultural experience. After the break we'll bring you the latest weather update and some events and happenings coming up from around the region. Nelson Tire Center. Great prices, great service. Buy your own Bryford trailer. All types, all sizes. See Colin Douglas for your tires and batteries. Are you looking for a scooter, walker, wheelchair, baby seats or push chairs? Then come in and see the Nelson Region Specialist at Mobility for You. 269 Queen Street, Richmond, opposite the library. We have a huge selection of scooters, walkers, wheelchairs and accessories along with a free booklet guide. We also provide a breakdown service if you ever get a puncher or a flat battery. We have fully equipped service vans to rescue you. Hi, I'm Robin Jordan and I invite you to call in and see the friendly team at Mobility for You, 269 Queen Street, Richmond, opposite the library. Why would you want to pay as much as $1,000 for a single bed mattress when you can buy a high quality locally made mattress like this for as little as $220? And a queen size mattress could cost you in excess of $3,000, but at Nelson Beds you could have a mattress like this as low as $425. So why would you go out and spend a fortune on your child's bedroom when you can come to Nelson Beds and buy a complete single mattress and base set, a 7 drawer scotch chest, a headboard and a 3 drawer bedside cabinet for as little as $979? So call and discuss our custom manufacturing options and local after sales service at Nelson Beds, Nelson's only bedding manufacturer. Eighty eight point one, the shed. Welcome to Smuggler's Pub and Cafe, open seven days a week with free parking all day. Our lunch menus have that fat old fashioned flavour where we treat you like treasure with the food you'll savour. We cater for children, grannies and granddads too, with special rates and privileges given to the elderly lunchtime crew. Our staff are friendly and kind and want to see you all come back time after time. Daytime or evening, it doesn't matter, give us a call on 546-4084 and we'll be happy to spoil ya. Victory 60 Plus is on Tuesdays at 1.30 through to 3.30pm at 238 Upper Vanguard Street. You can join in for cards, games and a cuppa. On behalf of the team here at Mainland Television News, thank you for joining us and we'll bring you the latest news and events from around the region again tomorrow.
Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air. Hi, I'm Paul Mainland and you're watching Ego TV or something along those lines. We're the team at JCAR, right here in Nelson, 120 Hardy Street. Our shop is full of electronic items, including security alarm systems, electronic components, solar and power, electronics toys, sound systems, cables, and much, much more. Jacob. 120 Hardy Street, Nelson. World War I was a defining period in our history, impacting greatly on the lives of people from the Nelson province. Memories of the First World War is an exhibition which will be displayed in a number of regional venues and is currently on at the Nelson Provincial Museum. Welcome me hearties to Smuggler's Pub and Cafe, famous for hearty meals, craft owls and a friendly service way. Sensational seasonal menus with meals all day and evening too, or sell in for a snack with special menus for young smugglers and you. Settle in for a jolly old time, relax and enjoy our award-winning dining and lovely fine wine. Decked out in an old worldly way, we're open seven days. Book or come on in to 8 Muratai Street, not far from a beach walk or swim. Phone 54640842. I'm Larry London from VOA Music Mix, bringing you news on the hour from around the world, plus music 24-7, from the latest hits to those classic favorites to jazz on Saturday mornings, plus much, much more. You can contact us by Googling Mainland TV or follow us on Facebook. Cheers from the team at Mainland Radio 1 and VOA Music Mix. From Cresswell's on Market Street, we've fitted footwear for all seasons, all reasons. For summer times in the sounds, for solid support on the sidelines, for social events around town, for good times around the grapevines. That's why at Cresswell's we believe in fitting footwear correctly so you get the best out of quality shoes and sandals and can then get the best out of life. Creswell Special Service, it's unique. Helping keep Marlborough on its feet for over 60 years. Christchurch's top 10 holiday park situated on 5 hectares of beautiful park-like settings. Only 5 kilometres from Christchurch town centre. 10 minutes from Christchurch International Airport and minutes away from Northlands Mall and all its facilities including a 24-hour supermarket. And just across the road is a great variety of restaurants to choose from. Christchurch Top 10 Holiday Park has been a family owned business for over 40 years and a proud member of the Top 10 Holiday Park Group, New Zealand's premier holiday parks chain. Our Top 10 Holiday Park is world renowned as a family park and provides a wide range of facilities such as a heated swimming pool, bike hire, free barbecues, a jumping pillow, trampolines, a family games and TV room, and wireless internet. Accommodation options cater for a wide variety to suit all needs from tent and camper van sites to family, luxury and corporate motels. And to make life easy for wary travellers we even have a drive through camper van check-in. At our Top 10 Holiday Park we even provide housing solutions for earthquake damaged houses and help with insurance approval. Come visit the Christchurch Top 10 Holiday Park, one of New Zealand's premier holiday parks, and experience all that Canterbury and Christchurch have to offer, right on our doorstep. Christchurch's amazing Top 10 Holiday Park. Top experience, always. Meadow Park, located on Cranford Street near the main North Road, Christchurch. 